We've said it so many times on this call already, COVID has disproportionately impacted the black community that's known. And the reasons why are systematic and layered and there's intersectionality as you mentioned, Rachel. Um, but I also think we can even look at some of the things that we are more practical that we know. Black individuals are more likely to be frontline healthcare workers, right? And so if you're working in a grocery store or if you're a bus driver, or if you're a janitor, you are more likely to be susceptible to COVID um, by being in those spaces where other people can quarantine at home if you're in a tech job um, or in a different job. And I think, I mean, we have to come with a certain amount of privilege because we're not in technically those frontline jobs where we are, have to be um, in the room all the time. We can be on our laptops right now, zooming into work or into school. Um, so I think that's a big thing that is talked about sometimes, but not always remembering that the people that are um, most disproportionately being affected are those that have to be at work and don't have the option to take a step back and do what the government's suggesting everyone do, which is social distance and quarantine. They have to go to work for their families. COVID definitely has impacted communities of color, black and brown, but especially black communities in a disproportionate manner. Um, and it comes down to this intersectionality of inequality, you know, and it's a shame. Um, and it unfortunately does not discriminate whether you are an immigrant um, or you are uh, a Black American who has lived in, in the country for years and years and years um, because it, it falls down to the way these inequalities appear in society. And I think it's um, it's it's a difficult thing to digest and to compute. But at the same time, it, it allows us to think about the history. For me as a physician, the thing about the history of medicine and how we've been complicit in this type of um, discrimination and these type of um, adverse health outcomes, unfortunately. Um, I, you know, I think it, it just makes me wonder as a physician, um, what I can do to make sure that my colleagues continue to provide equitable care um, and where the problem really lies. Is that a problem with our education system? Um, the way medicine is taught um, we don't really acknowledge these structural issues when it comes down to um, medical um, knowledge. We're really focused more on, on the body and the pathology and the treatments. I know, Joelle, you're in medical school now, and I think the past year, medical schools are trying to address that question um, in light of COVID and in light of the multiple events of the past year, um, you know, when we say, why are minorities affected so poorly? Medical schools are starting to say, yeah, how can we play a role in, in addressing this and changing this? Because really, we are part of the system. I agree. And I want to jump in from like kind of the medical student perspective. I think medical education needs to highlight this a lot more. But I, I'll give one example in my own um, like experience of something that happened where I was like, well, we need to really have more diversity education in medicine. Remember when I was during my first year of medical school, um, it was one of our classes, we were going in our heme um, lecture, and I think we were talking about cyanosis. And cyanosis is where a baby's skin or a person's skin in general can turn blue. Um, and it happens for a lot of different reasons. But I remember thinking, hey, my skin's not going to turn blue. What like? what would I do on someone that looks like me from looking to see if they're cyanotic? So I raised my hand, asked the question, and the professor was like, kind of like, well, no one's asked me that. I should have just included it in. But he ended up saying, you can look at your eyes, you can look at the skin, see if it's dry, you can look at mucous membranes. There's a lot of different ways. But one of my classmates came up afterwards, and she essentially said, um, that was a great question. Like, I didn't even think to ask that. And I kept asking myself, wow, if I hadn't asked that question, when would they have learned about this? maybe they wouldn't have learned about it until they were actually in the hospital seeing a patient and realized they didn't know how to tell, you know? Um, and I think things like that, where if you include them in, include these types of diversity education in earlier on, looking at medic medicine holistically, you can literally save people's lives in the end, right? I hear a lot of times people saying race shouldn't matter and it shouldn't matter. But the fact of the matter is it does, 